as you can see, I got my single bed put in here in the living room with the bed frame, the mattress, the box springs, all the linens piled up. Had to get them out of the bedroom. But I've got the, most of the floor put down. It's not fastened yet. I, I was cutting it, fitting it, making sure it all fit correctly. And then uh, I've got to run to Walmart and get a caulking gun to use with my liquid nails. and Because that's what they use to uh, glue floors, subfloors, and that type of thing. And uh, that way I can use liquid nails to glue it down. Put my uh, screws in it, my deck screws that I'm using, my wood screws. And then I'm going to get over and move everything out of that corner and finish that corner out. But i got to do this first. So I can move everything back on top of it. Plus, I've got to go to Walmart, like I said, and get the um, caulking gun. Well, as you can see, I'm in here, been working on this other corner. Now all i got to do is measure that little section right there. And put that section in and a little piece right under there which doesn't have to be very wide but I put that piece in and this one and I'll be ready to glue these sections down and screw them in and then I'll be able to go on to the next step it's a mess when you still got furniture in here and having to move it back and forth whenever you're doing anything but hey it's getting done and I got the hard part right there of that vent cover I had to get that cut out but I got it so now I'm just going to take a few minutes break measure that section and get that put in Look at all this food, y'all. I don't even know what's in some bags yet, but I've got water. Uh, last time they sent Gatorade and lemon tea. And this time I got all these bags, what I haven't already put up. Uh, meat, pork chops, hamburg, ground beef. But I got these bags full that I haven't even dug into yet. I got another bag of cat food, a case of cat food right there. Um... I'm surely blessed, y'all, with these uh, really good subscribers that I have that keep sending me food. I mean, it cuts down on my spending for food every week or every month. And uh, it allows me to come up with the money to do repairs and things that have got to be done like that water leak in the bathroom. You know, that costs me money to put the floor in the bathroom. It's costing me money to put the floor in the bedroom where that was damaged from the water leak so yeah i'm surely blessed because i don't know if i'd have had the money uh, you know if i'd have had to buy all this food i mean i would not have bought this much i wouldn't have been able to but yeah thank you subscriber i feel very blessed and honored to have a friend like you and it's just a shame she doesn't want to know want people to know who she is she wants to stay anonymous, so I have to, um, you know, I have to honor her wishes. But thank you very much, uh, anonymous subscriber. You're a blessing to me. Thank you. Well, people, oh, I wanted to give you an idea of what I've been doing with this floor. Since it's a bigger room, and I'm finding that the walls are not completely straight, uh, no matter how straight you cut the plywood, for some reason, it, it does not fit up as tight as the hallway in that little bedroom did. So, I got liquid nails, heavy duty liquid nails. You get it at uh, Home Depot. 
It's like three ninety seven a tube. Um, I got my caulking gun at uh, Walmart for it was like three dollars and ninety seven cent. So far, it's taken five of these tubes of liquid nails to go around this. And now what I did, uh, when I first started, I laid, cut my plywood, I laid it down, I fitted it all out on half of it. <coughs> and then one section at a time, I would raise the plywood up and I would put a bead of this liquid nails around the floor around the edge of where the plywood would be. And then I put a couple of squigglies down through the center, laid the plywood down, and then I proceeded to screw it in place. And I did each one that way until I finished over here in this corner behind me. Um, that's the only way you can do it. And I did my, my, um, Great, basically the easy way. I know there's probably uh, ways that these guys do it that might be different from me. But what I did was I measured my hole. And then I completely cut. I cut one end and then I went down th this end. No, I didn't cut it all the way here. But what I did was I cut an L out of the corner. I cut the opening for the grate to go in and then I just put the L shape right back in. Dropped it down, glued it in, and then put three screws in it. Fits my grate perfect. And what I'm going to do too, because I, after a period of time when you step on these grates, they have a tendency to bend and the ends of them will come up a little bit to where it catches your toe of your shoe on them. So what I'm going to do, and my old grates had it, these new ones don't. I'm going to drill a hole in each end of them. I'm going to put one hole right in the center of the end of it. And I'm going to fasten it down to the floor with a screw. Now, that's the way all of my old grates were. But when I bought the new ones, I couldn't find any that had holes or screws to go with them to fasten them down. So that's what I'm going to do with these when I get the floor done. But as you can see, I've still got a ways to go. It's got to be sealed. I've got to put my uh, faux plank board lines down before I even seal it. So I've got another good day's work on this floor ahead of me. And I use, um, you can use deck screws. Get, if you can get fine two inch deck screws, I couldn't. So I use three inch ones on the hallway and the other bedroom. I found they were a little bit difficult to put in the floor. So I got some uh, construction screws. They're for uh, particle board, plywood, that type of thing. And th they work a little bit easier getting them in the, in the wood. For me, it does anyway. But it took me about three boxes or three packages of these so it comes to about $20 just for screws. But hey, and the, um, the plywood, I overestimated what it was going to take to go in here. I've probably got a sheet and a half of plywood left outside to use on something else. I may finish, uh, fix my birdhouse with part of it, some of the scraps, but I'm going to save the biggest pieces because I'm going to have more floor to do later. I'm not, I'm not going to be doing it anytime soon, but I will have more floor to do later. So I will put, put that piece and a half of plywood in my shed and keep it until I get ready to work on the rest of the floor. So that's basically where I'm at right now with it. But I'm so glad I cut these doors off. They both work fine. I mean, the house is so unlevel. And you can tell it if you're sitting here looking at the bottom of that door over there. I mean, it's so uneven. The house is. It's ridiculous. 
but it's short enough that that door does not drag the floor, which that's what I wanted. It's cut up high enough that it's not going to hit the floor when you open the door. And before, part of it did hit the floor when I opened it. So I knew I had to do something if I was going to put plywood down because there was no way I'd be able to even open the door without cutting it off. So, but yeah, now I've got to get my lines down for the faux plank board look. And then I will take my sealer and go over it and seal it. I'm still thinking about it. I don't know if I want to stain it slightly or not. I did slightly stain the other wood, the other bedroom in the hallway. Not enough that you can really tell it. It just gave it a tint, darker shade to the wood. But the, the wood is going to darken a little bit in time anyway, even if I just put the clear sealer on it. So I'm still debating which way I want to go with it. But uh, that's where I'm at right now, and I just thought I'd stop and fill you in. Uh, I did fill up a couple of wide cracks that I couldn't avoid with my... Uh, Liquid nails, it works great as a filler in a crack. And then you can, if you want to, you can go over the top of it with uh, wood glue. Or if you can get it in there nice enough, just use the liquid nail. Because it'll look more like the wood. Either one will. So, that's where I'm at right now. I just had to stop and take a break because I've been working on this floor ever since my live stopped this afternoon, which was about 7 o'clock, no, 3, 4, 5. It was a little after 5 o'clock when I started on this. I did have to go to Home Depot first, though. I went out there, I picked up my nail, my screws, I mean, not nails, the screws, and come home and, and immediately started working on this. And I did have to cut some of it to fit. Because, you know, all, every bit of this just did not fit by taking the sheets that were already cut and laying them down. This room is like 12 foot, I don't know, maybe 12 foot by 8 here and then almost like 12 foot there to the door because of this cut off here for the, the bathroom. So it's not, I mean, it's not, you can't take just plywood and lay it down and expect it to work because you're going to have to cut some of it to fit. And that's what I did. Oh, let's see if I can get up. And I'm all sweaty. I've been sweating like crazy. Oh, like this piece over here. Let's see if I can get over here and show you. Just overlook the mess. I've got things piled up. But see, that piece there under under that little, that one dresser drawer at the bottom, I had to cut a piece to go under there. And you can see how uneven even this little nightstand or dresser is. Look how uneven they put it in. It's not straight. Now, my plywood is straight down there, but the dresser isn't. It, it <laughs> It's crazy. So you may run into stuff like that when you do your floor. You know, if your floor is not even all the way around, all the walls are not straight, you're going to run into stuff like that. But it'll work. <laughs> and I got me some more of those plastic gloves and used it to put some of that wood glue down. But yeah, I just wanted to get on here and uh, show you that. That's one reason I started at this corner at the door and worked my way to the other side. Is because I knew this floor was not going to come out even. That I would have to eventually cut pieces to make them fit. So, you know, I started it this way and I worked back that, you know, toward the back side of the room just for that reason. 
But it's going to look pretty good when I get it finished and I get everything moved back the way it's supposed to be. I get all my lines put in and all that kind of good stuff. I think it'll look halfway decent. I mean, it looks pretty good now. And I'm not even finished with it. But, uh, yeah, just wanted to get on here and, and tell you what I'm doing. And let's see, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using to... Uh, this is what I seal it with. It's poly urethane or whatever. <laughs> Semi-gloss is fast drying. It's water-based. So you can clean up your paintbrushes with water. And I'd rather do that than to use the oil base. I never liked working with oil base paint. Not for something like this. So... And, even though I've got stuff stacked on the floor over here trying to get them out of the way, I wanted to show you this. One of my boards weren't completely straight when I put it toward the, toward the doorway from that little bathroom. So you see what I had to do? I had to cut a strip of wood to go in the doorway, kind of where the, the door frame would be. And it's cut at an angle slightly, but it fits in there perfect. And that's all I needed, because I may put a threshold over that later. And if I do, it's just going to cover it up. But at least it's uh, full, you know, it don't have a big gap. And it's something that fits in there. And I went ahead and pulled up my old stripping mold, and, and I could have left it. Because, I mean... You can leave it or pull it up. I figured I could get my plywood to fit better if I pulled it up, so I pulled mine up. And after I get finished the floor later on down the road, I intend to get new molding to put around the edge of the floor. But when I do get it, it's going to be a wider molding that covers a little bit more all the way around the edge. It's not going to be that little bitty tiny strip. Because I, I think the wider molding looks better. It costs a little bit more, but I think it looks better in the long run. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to get this section in the, the video. And I'll continue on tomorrow. And I'll bring you back and show you or try to show you each step I go through as I do it. I didn't want to bore you with all the details because you've already seen how to put the floor down except for the glue. And it's the same same thing as putting it down without the glue. You just put a little bit of glue to cover where the plywood's going to fit on the floor all the way around the outside edge of it or an inch in, inside the edge. And then put a little squiggly line down through the center. Lay your plywood down. Put your screws in move on to the next piece make sure it fits good get it good and tight and snug before you screw it down and then just screw it down and that glue is going to help hold it in place especially for these places that have little gaps and i don't think the bedroom the small bedroom had any gaps the hallway didn't have any gaps but this room does it's a bigger room and it like I said, the walls are not straight. <laughs> They're far from being straight. I mean, I can't believe it. So you might run into the same problem I did with the walls not being straight. And if they're not, you just have to kind of work with your plywood, trim it up, trim your plywood up, make your plywood fit the floor. And don't worry about it. <laughs> don't have to be perfect. And I'll let you go for now, bring you back when I get some more done. Well, what is this, day three I've been working on my floor? <laughs> but anyway, what I'm going to be doing now, today anyway, is trying to put the lines on the floor to make it look like faux plank boarding. So... 
And it doesn't matter. You don't have to have each one the same width. I'm going to use this stripping as a guide. Well, maybe not that side. <clears throat> One of these days, I'll buy me a yardstick. And I'm going to use the seam in that board as a guideline for there. I want the other one altered, so I'm going to fill in the crack right there with a little bit of wood glue so it'll look like one straight board, and then I'll start another board here. It doesn't matter how long they are. It doesn't matter any of that stuff. Now, see, I can divide this one up maybe here to make it look like two pieces together, or I can leave it whole. And like I said, you don't have to have each one the same width. You can make one narrow. You can make one wide. Because plank floors were not usually all the same width. But I'm going to be leaving this floor like this for quite a while. I like the wood look. And I'd rather have the wood than a lot of other stuff. <laughs> so... And I may divide this one up right about here, just because I want to. I left that one whole, and I could shorten it down here. Thing I don't wear, like about wearing these shorts, they, when I bend over, they ride up. And I can't handle that. Drives me nuts. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and do this with the rest of the floor, the whole floor. Uh, or at least half of it, as much as I can get done. And then I'm going to clear coat it. And then move on to the rest of it to do this with. So, that's what my intentions are for today. And so we've already got the line here. 
because that's where the two pieces of wood were joined. So all I have to do is make a line this way to offset it, and that'll be good. And that's how you do faux flooring. <laughs> and I will have to get a darker marker. I've got one. Let's see. See where my markers are. I've got one of these. If you want your uh, lines to really show up, and I kind of do because that's the accent point of the, the floor. So you can see that a little bit better. Now you can do that or you don't have to. You can use a light marker on it or you can use a dark marker. It's just however you want your lines to show up. If you want them to show in good detail like I do, I want them to be detailed. Then use a wider marker. That will show a lot of detail. I keep turning that the wrong way because it's all nicked up on one side. And I know somebody, I don't remember who, suggested that I just cut the boards. Uh, cut boards out of the plywood. Well, I didn't want to do that. I wanted it to stay as in big a pieces as I could possibly leave it and be able to get it home for the strength in the floor. If I'd have cut each board the width of the lines and then had to screw it down, it would have weakened the floor a little bit. Now, I could put, do that on top of this floor because now I've got a solid floor down. I can put any, anything on top of this. I could put a no limb tile, um, another layer, you know, that wood, um, that uh, snap wood panels that you call it that you put in the floor. I can't think of the name of it. I could put that down at this point if I wanted to, because I've got a solid floor. The subfloor under this was not solid. So I needed to put something solid down to give me a solid floor to work with, if that makes sense to y'all. So I wanted it left in as big a sheets as I could leave it without cutting it or anything else. And I did that. I cut each uh, panel in three sections, which gave me like 32 inches by four feet is what each section was. So that makes a solid floor rather than cutting it. You know, I don't did not want to cut it up in boards, put it that way. But I, I wanted you to know the reasoning behind that. And if you're working with a weak floor, a floor as old as this one, You will understand. <laughs> a 
Oh, I did not mean to do that. I get over anxious. I did that in the other room, <laughs> and I didn't mean to do it. I'm going to have to get that up before I put, put sealer on it. I'll get me a piece of sandpaper and sandpaper that mark off. Yeah, as you know, or you may not know if you watched the previous uh, videos that I did, or the, the earlier section, I had to cut these in three sections, 32 inches by four feet, to be able to lay the seats down in my car and fit the pieces up through the trunk. I couldn't put a whole sheet in there, or I would have done that. And it made it easier for me to handle, you know, moving it in and out and around and getting it in the floor and all that. It made it a lot easier for me to work with. I think I'll highlight this part right here. And that is actually where the floor meets. kind of distract from the rest of it. And I need to put a dividing point somewhere here in the middle. Maybe here. And maybe one here. But that's all there is to it in making a faux plank floor. I need to go over this line with a darker one. I mean, if you want the dark line, just do that to begin with. Don't even use the smaller. Um, marker. See? <laughs> it's just that easy. It takes a little bit of time and I don't think you can see what I'm showing you or trying to show you. get a little closer on it here I know let me turn this around see the lines I put in it and when I get finished with it and get the sealer put on it that's going to look like plank boards Because once the sealer is on the lines, it uh, it looks more like it's a plank board rather than a line on it. So there you go. I'm going to be busy with this for a while. And of course I will bring you back. Well, y'all, here is the last update on the floor. I've got the um, sealer put on this part of it. All of it that's not <laughs> got something sitting on top of it has sealer on it. 
And you see part of them was a little darker than the other ones. And I wished I could have got those spaced out somewhere else, but by the time I put a little bit of the stain on the rest of it, it'll help darken it to maybe match that. Not exactly. But then it's not exactly all the same color anyway. But I've got to put the vent back in the hole. I took that out so I could uh, seal around the edges, you know, under the edges of the frame of that vent. So I couldn't do that with the vent there. But yeah, I got the lines to make it look like it's all plank boards. And like I said, they're all different widths. You don't want to make them every single one the exact same width or length. You want to kind of mix it up. And what happens when you put the lines on it, unless it's discolored like that part is, you don't really notice where each square was put in and where it's, it wasn't put in because it looks all like it was put in in boards. Some longer than others that stopped at different places, that type of thing. But I think it's going to look good when I get it done. I've got to let this dry a little bit, and then I'm going to come back with a little bit of stain. But I'm not going to put stain on that darkest spot. I'm just going to put stain on the rest of it to kind of even the color out a little bit. Like that way out in there, that's a lighter color than some of the rest of it is. Even pieces way out there toward the corner, you can see are a little darker. That's darker. And that's a little darker. But it's all going to look good once I get it finished. But I wanted to give you this update. Show you this much of the floor with uh, the lines and one coat of sealer on it. I think it's going to look good when I get finished. Well, I've got this corner in. As soon as the area between that little file cabinet and the computer table dries, I can move that little tape, uh, file cabinet back to the left, and I can put the lines in that little corner of the room that I've got yet to do. Put the lines in there for the uh, boards, and then... I will seal it, let it dry, and guess what? I'll be done with this floor. And I can move all of my furniture back in here and straighten it up. And that's going to be it for floors for me for a while. <laughs> I don't want to tackle any more floors for a while yet. Not any time this summer anyway. But see the difference it makes when you put the lines in it versus that corner over there, right there, that doesn't have any lines. You can see the difference. It looks like you've got boards down instead of just a sheet of plywood. So it looks a lot better. So if anybody wants to do that, you know, I did it because I don't have enough money to put the floor down put carpet or buy linoleum or anything else on to put down on it right now. I love wood anyway. I don't have the money to get tongue and groove boards to put down. So this is the next best thing for me. I'm just going to make my plywood look like faux plank boards. And that's going to be my wood floor for right now. I may do something to it different later on but it's going to be a long time i'm not messing with any floors for a while yet so i just wanted to show you that i'll probably get a picture of it when i get everything back in here because i mean the bed is going to take up this corner here anyway so you're not going to see much of the floor <laughs> once i get the bed back and get the you know the computer tables where it's going to be to the right or to the left. And because you can see all the cords coming from the computer. And really, I need to get rid of that computer. I don't use that one anymore. I use my laptop. I need to get do something with that computer, get it out of here, and it'll give me more room 
to maybe put my printer up on the top of that table instead of the computer because I've got to pull out a uh, dr uh, drawer there at the top right there that pulls out and I can put my laptop on it to use it. That's where the keyboard went for the other computer and I got it put away in one of the dresser doors over there for right now. Because like I said, I don't use it. I spent a bunch of money on it. And it's just an old computer. It's not capable of getting online to be able to do much at all. Uh, some things you can't even get online with because it's so slow. And it's been so long since I've even tried it probably won't get online at this point. So I just need to get rid of it. But anyway, I wanted to show you the floor. I've just got that one little corner to do under that file cabinet. And I'm done, y'all. That's my faux plank floor. Well, there goes the finished corner. I'm going to let all this dry, put a little bit more stain on that corner, and a little bit more down here in front of it, and then I'm done. I'm going to let it dry, put all my furniture back in here, straighten it up, clean up the room, clean up my living room and get the bed out of it <laughs> and hopefully get somewhat back to normal. But anyway, I wanted to show you that I did get that corner done and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Love y'all. Bye.